Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me for my presentation. I'll be talking today about adapting your project management leader and leadership style to the project economy. So let's get right started. First, a few disclaimers. Whatever is being presented here is my own opinion. The PowerPoint slides are protected by copyright laws. They belong to the Project Management Institute Africa conference team. And uh, you're not allowed to photocopy or publicize them without written permission. Any pictures, un other, unless otherwise indicated, are either my own property or they're from free stock photo websites. Okay, who is this Stephanie? Stephanie is a nurse. That was my first profession. That was my big love and I thought I was going to be a nurse for the rest of my life. And then life happened and I found myself a project manager. And suddenly I was spending a lot of my time on, on construction sites and in IT related projects. I'm also a PMI volunteer. Volunteering for PMI has been very, very enriching and you make amazing friends and you learn a lot. So I can only recommend volunteering. And then I'm also a consultant, a trainer, a mentor, and an SDI assessor. Currently I'm working with Synergetic Energy Partners, which is a company that works in the oil and gas sector, but is um, consulting in the infrastructure projects. And I'm an internal consultant for this company. Okay, what are we going to talk about today? First, I'm going to do a little introduction of the topic. We'll talk about leadership. We'll talk about project management skills and how they're changing over time. We'll mention the talent triangle and what artificial intelligence is doing to our profession. We'll talk about the future skills needed. And we'll talk about being an influencer, a mentor and a coach. And then about developing your personal leadership style and I'll round it up with two practical examples. So let's start out with a few facts. First of all, the project management world is changing and it's changing fast, so we need to keep adapting. Traditional project management is often not enough anymore, so we have to look out for other approaches. Projects are becoming a lot more complex than they were before. And there is suddenly hybrid projects that use several different approaches at the same time. Project management profession as a whole is changing. Project business management has also come up because we're having more and more outsourcing in our projects. That is the business side of project management. Either you're doing projects for a client, which means the project is making money for your company, or you're doing an internal project where you are hiring outsourced skills because you don't have those skills internally. PMI had phrased it during the 50 year celebrations that now we are moving from frameworks to everything works. So let's look at the background a little bit. Why is all this happening? First of all, artificial intelligence and the fourth industrial evolution have brought a lot of changes. And these changes are really affecting our project management style and our leadership style. We cannot continue doing things the way we were doing them before. And in Africa, these things are changing faster than in other parts of the world. Because in some areas, we are going through an evolution in five years that the rest of the Western world has done in 50 years. So we are actually being catapulted from our old perceptions of a dictatorial kind of leadership. And suddenly we have to change to become people focused leaders. So the leader is no longer the one who knows everything and gives everybody orders, but we actually become people managers. Leadership is suddenly all about adapting, nurturing, customizing and multi-layered collaboration. And you can see all of that requires a lot of new skills Project managers overall are becoming more of facilitators and people managers. And that means you have to sharpen your leadership skills. The situation in Africa, as most of you know, 
is this that you on the one hand can have very manual projects like the one on the left where the ladies are carrying the sand and uh, everything is done by hand. The other day I passed a construction site in Nairobi where they were mixing all the concrete with a shovel and then they were shoveling the concrete over a staircase up to the second floor where they are now working. Now that's something that people in Europe have never seen. On the other hand, we're having these mega projects coming up, mainly in the cities, where amazing buildings are being built and amazing constructions are being done, whether it's road constructions, building constructions, bridges, railways, things that even in Europe some people have never seen. So as project managers in Africa, we actually have to be on both sides. We have to be able to manage the project on the left and the project on the right. And that means we need to learn and adapt and fast. So let's look first of all on leadership because that is one of the major skills that we will need. Leadership is actually built up on the pillars of emotional intelligence. And a lot of people don't know that emotional intelligence actually has two pillars. The left one is the one that we need to master first. We need to learn to understand ourselves not just the way we are and the way we react when we're in our happy place, but also how that changes when we go in distress or we're in conflict, because then suddenly we start acting out of character. Now, when we have recognized how that happens in ourselves and we have learned to recognize the early signals, we can then suddenly control ourselves but it will also help us for the other pillar. And that is working with others because we will learn to recognize this kind of symptoms when somebody starts going under stress or going into conflict and suddenly starts reacting differently. And uh, we can quickly pull them aside and find out what is going on. That's what emotional intelligence is all about. The other thing that we need to learn to recognize is our inner motivational value systems because that will determine how we talk to the different people. Imagine you're giving a report to Mother Teresa or you're giving a report to Donald Trump. You will use a totally different approach for either of them. There are three main motivational value systems and all of us have them at varying degrees. The first one is people. That's where Mother Teresa fits into the extreme where somebody focuses completely on the other people and makes sure that they're comfortable and they're getting better. The other focus is on performance. Now you can imagine how probably Donald Trump fits here, where it's all about achieving goals, getting results. People are not that important. And the third one is processes, where it's all about how it's done and which process did we follow. All of us have either one or two of these as our major focus. And with all our stakeholders in the projects, we have to figure out where do they sit? Do they focus on people? Do they focus on performance or on processes or a combination of the two? And that's how you adapt your reports. Being a leader is actually all about um, commitment, commitment of yourself to the team and commitment of the team to yourself and alignment. All the team members and all the stakeholders need to be aligned with each other. And then you as the team leader are the one who needs to give direction. When all these three come together, that's when leadership happens. If you look at the talent triangle, previously in project management, everything was about the technical project management, your 10 knowledge areas, your five process groups, but now suddenly we have to deal with leadership and we need a lot of strategic and business management. And that's what I'll be mentioning a lot because the business aspect of projects is extremely important. So leadership and strategic and business management are really gaining on importance. At the same time, AI is taking over a lot of the things that we were doing on the technical project management. They're not taking them over completely, but when is the last time that you did 
a gun chart or a work breakdown structure with pen and paper. I personally have never done it on pen and paper. We're using softwares and the softwares are becoming more and more efficient. They do more and more for you. Project tracking suddenly happens from your phone. So your team members do the tracking, not you as the project manager. So you can see, we need to keep adapting and learning new skills. And as I mentioned, the project business management is coming up. Because suddenly we need to make sure that our company earns money with the project. So if we compare the skills, these skills listed here, drawing work breakdown structures by hand, preparing extensive project gun charts by hand, tracking projects, drawings and schematics, all this is either taken over by a software or it's made a lot simpler with the software. At the same time, we need to learn all these new skills. We're suddenly holding virtual meetings. We're having teams that are not just on the ground, but they're maybe all around the globe. It's very, very common these days in projects to have at least one team member who sits in another country. Communication is becoming more and more important with a scattered team and with a more complex team. Your leadership skills, which goes together with the people skills. And the more people you have involved in the project, the more conflicts can come up. So conflict resolution also becomes very important. If you have people in different countries, you may have people in different time zones. In Africa, as you all know, already when you have a project, you usually have a minimum of three different cultures you're dealing with. Now add a few team members in different countries and you can imagine how many cultures you will have to adapt to and how many people you have to help to adjust to each other. That's where your emotional intelligence and your re relationship intelligence comes in. Customization will be playing a very big role in the future more than before digital skills. And as we go more and more into hybrid approaches, we all will not need to learn about the agile approaches. And again, business project business management will gain more and more importance. So the new project manager has to be a role model unless he models the way and shows people how he wants the team to work together. He cannot expect the team to work to get together very well. He also has to be a team builder. When you have all these different parties in the different countries or the different corners of the country that you're living in, you have to pull them together. Suddenly we're in virtual teams and pulling people together that have never physically met is very, very difficult. That means you have to be a leader and a leader is also a mentor and a coach because leadership is all about nurturing, bringing out the best in your team and making them become one cohesive team that really performs together. So to sum it up, all these things will slowly make you into a servant leader. And it's very important that you read up on servant leadership, what it actually means. It doesn't mean that you do the work for others, but it means that you nurture people and bring out the best in everybody. Project business management is something that the new project manager has to understand and has to read up on. However, while you're doing all this, you still need to develop your own style. Because if you try to manage projects the same way Stephanie manages them, it's never going to work. Nobody is going to believe you because Stephanie has her personality and her style and you have your personality and your style. So don't ever try to be someone else. At the same time, it is very, very important to be honest and vulnerable. Now that is something that for some of us in the African context is not very common. It's not what we are used to. Because before the leader was the one who always pretended he knows everything and he will never admit a mistake. However, in the multicultural and so diverse team, it is so much easier if you show yourself vulnerable. If you don't know something, admit it. Your team will respect you for that. And do things your way. Of course, within the guidelines, the foundations don't shake, change. And you also need to be very, very sensitive because 
if you have all these different cultures you're dealing with, they all have different beliefs, they have different value systems. I'm sure most of us have seen or heard about some of these um, young NGO types that come to save the third world and they land, the lady is coming in her little tank top, she's wearing shorts and she goes straight into church to meet a women's group. These are women from the women's guild who are very strong in their faith and they have very strict values and they know what they believe in, what they think is decent and acceptable. And here comes this person who is dressed in a way that is so offensive to them. Do you think anybody is going to listen to her? Do you think they're going to respect her? Now imagine yourself in a team where you have a strict Muslim, you have a strict Hindu, and you have some Christians and some people that are somewhere in between for whom religion doesn't play such an important role, but maybe the culture plays a role. You can see there's a lot of things you need to think about. First of all, they all have different holidays that they keep. They have different beliefs of what is acceptable. Imagine catering a team meal for them. The Hindu will probably be a vegetarian. The Muslim will definitely not be happy if you serve him any pork. And some of the other people may not think that a meal without meat is acceptable. So you have to be very creative. And that's the same when it comes to even behavior on project sites. As a project manager, you need to become a facilitator. The times where the project manager was saying what is being done and when are over. You're now the team leader who gets all the team members to agree on how that project can be done in the most efficient way. And at the same time, you need to be business savvy. So let's look at two scenarios. The first scenario is an installation of a security system. Before, the project manager was usually a subject matter expert. He would instruct the team what is done and how it's done and when to be done. He would install your CCTV system, your access control system, and your walkthrough metal detector. Each one of these systems is a standalone system. They're commissioned. You get your three sign-offs, project is done. These days, it becomes a complex integrated system with many different elements. I've managed projects where suddenly the camera had to speak to the electric fence. Now your normal security company doesn't necessarily have the skills to install an electric fence. So you hire a subcontractor for that. We've also installed another system where you had a trapdoor where the entry to a factory was protected because in the factory, whatever they were manufacturing was highly explosive. So they actually did have to check every single day that nobody has alcohol on their breath. So in the trap door, you go through the first door by swiping your normal stuff card. You enter, the door closes, and then there is a second door. And that door is actually opened with an alcohol blow system. If you don't have alcohol on your breath, you can proceed into the factory floor and can continue with your daily work. If you have alcohol on your breath, there is another door that opens and takes you straight into the HR department. You can imagine that is a lot more complex to install than these three stand alone systems in the previous project. To handle a project like that, you need specialists, you need collaboration, subcontractors are involved, and the programming and customization is becoming a lot more complex. I've been in projects where the commissioning technicians spent up to three months doing the entire programming. And that again is something you need to explain to the client because the client is used to the old projects and he will probably start complaining that you're taking too long. The project manager, as you can see, is the facilitator. You can never be a subject matter expert of all the different systems that are being integrated. But you can also see that these kind of projects are a lot higher risk than the previous projects were. So let's look at another scenario. 
This is the project for a development of a customized club software. In the past, you would have a group of software developers who under a project manager who had an IT background or was a developer himself would sit down and come up with their software. Locally produ produced software that worked for the local context. However, these days, usually these softwares are either bought and customized or coding happens in other countries, either because of cost or because there is more experience. So you can imagine now suddenly, instead of having a team sitting together, you have people in different parts of the world working on this software. And you, of course, also have a problem with language because the English that's spoken in different countries is always slightly different. So your team is subcontracted. It's located in different countries and time zones. It's from different cultures and religions. Remember what I said about different holidays? If you have team members that sit in a purely Islamic country, they may have their weekend on Friday and Saturday while the rest of the team has their weekend on Saturday and Sunday. Your project plan has to revolve around that. You have many languages coming together and that includes many different flavors of English. You can see again, this is a high risk project. And you can see where your leadership and your people skills come in. And at the same time, while you're subcontracting, you need to make sure that you're taking care of the business side of things. So to summarize, the modern project manager has to be highly adaptable. You have to be ready to deal with any situation. You need to be able to customize your project to all the needs that come up, to all the risks that come up and the situations that evolve as your project goes on. And at the same time, you have to bring people together. People that are from very different backgrounds and religions and cultures. Your technical project management is still the foundation and you will never do without the foundation. Just like a painter, if you, somebody becomes an artist, has to understand his color wheel and he has to understand what kind of paints you use or what kind of surfaces. A project manager has to know about the 10 project, uh, sorry, the 10 knowledge areas and has to know about the process groups. And then he has to become so familiar with them that he can learn to play with them. In a hybrid project, you will probably start with traditional project management, but then there will be certain aspects of that project that you will need to do in an agile approach. And in the end, you need to tie it all together. Again, you can see that's a lot more about people management and your soft skills are what is going to make you successful in your career. Again, I can't stress enough about project business management. I know in many of our projects, the sale has been done by the salespeople and uh, you are left with a budget and you have to somehow make it fit. But we need to learn to influence it so that this is not a vicious circle that repeats itself with every single project that's happening. We need to do our lessons learned. We need to do our statistics and our reports where we prove that whatever worked was done the right way and whatever didn't work, we need to come up with solutions how to do it better for the next project. If we underestimated our project in any of the Aztec uh, estimates, then we need to make sure that for the next time, we have learned why we underestimated it, how we can do it next time. So project business management is a commercial perspective to project management. When you're doing projects for clients or when you're contracting specialists or subcontractors for your own internal projects. And to round it all up, we need to build solid relationships with our customers to win future business. And we also need to build solid relationships within our project. Thank you very much for listening to me. I'll be taking a few questions shortly. 
if you want to reach out with me to me and uh, have more communication about the things I talked about, please see my email address down here. It's stephanie.jäger.pm at gmail.com. You can also reach out to me on LinkedIn or through projectmanagement.com.